Suppose your Visa card calculates interest using the average daily balance method and the monthly interest rate is 1.5%. We're given an itemized billing statement for the month of December and we're asked four questions. First of all, we'll find the average daily balance and we'll talk about what that means. Then we'll use that to calculate the interest that's owed for this month. We'll add that interest on to the final balance to figure out the total balance that's owed at the end. And then we'll talk about a minimum payment at the end. So first, let's think about what the average daily balance is. Basically, credit cards need some sort of way to take a changing balance throughout the month and distill it down to a single number as their balance. The average daily balance method is one way of doing this. And the idea is, as the name suggests, we add up the balance on each day and then divide that by the number of days in the month. So, for instance, December 1st, the unpaid balance is $1,500. December 2nd, the unpaid balance is $1,500 as well, and also on December 3rd. Then, December 4th, the unpaid balance is $1,200 because there was a $300 payment received. So, December 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, the unpaid balance is $1,200 each day. And then, December 8th, it rises again, and we have this changing balance throughout the month. So we could list out all the days from December 1st through December 31st, listing the balance for each day, and then add those up and divide by 31, the number of days, and that will give us the average daily balance. The way we'll do it though, just to simplify matters a little bit, is we'll build a table where we have the unpaid balance and the number of days that that unpaid balance stands. So, for instance, at the beginning, the unpaid balance is $1,500, and that lasts for three days, December 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Then, the balance drops to $1,200 on December 4th, and it stays that way for the 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th, or four days. Then, on the 8th, it goes up to 1325 because another charge is made to the card and it stays that way for seven more days, the 8th through the 14th. Notice that I can find these numbers by subtracting, for instance, the 15th minus the 8th to get seven days between them, or the 8th minus the 4th to get four days between them. Then, at that point, it goes up again to 1370 and stays that way for seven more days. Finally, it goes up to 1378 with the last charge and stays that way for 10 days from the 22nd all the way through the 31st. Now, just to check, we can add these numbers up and make sure that we have 31 total days counted. And if you add those up, you'll find that we do in fact have 31 days. So if the balance was $1,500 for three days, $1,200 for four days, and so on, to add them up, all we have to do is multiply 1,500 times 3, multiply 1,200 times 4, and add those, and then multiply 1,325 times 7, add that on, and so on, until we've added up the balance for all the days, and then divide that by the number of days, 31. So we'll carry out that calculation here. 1,500 times 3 plus 1,200 times 4 plus 1325 times 7 plus 1370 times 7 plus 137850 times 10. So adding up the balance on all the 31 days gives 41,950. Then if we divide that by the number of days, we get the average. So the average daily balance is $1,353.23. Notice that the average daily balance is similar to the balance throughout the month. And if we got in a number that wasn't between 1200 and 1500, we would conclude that we made a mistake somewhere. But this average daily balance makes sense. Once we have the average daily balance, then we can calculate how much interest is due for this month. So, since it's just one payment period, there's no chance for compounding to happen. So it's the simple interest formula, PRT, 
where the principal is this average daily balance. The interest rate is 1.5%. And because it's a monthly interest rate, time is measured in months. With everything else we've done in this chapter, time is measured in years. But credit cards are the one exception. Time is measured in months because interest rates are stated as monthly interest rates. So because it's just one month, T is one. If we multiply these together, 13.53 and 23 cents times 0 0.015 times one is $20 and 30 cents. Now to answer the third part, the amount owed at the end of the month is simply the final balance at the end of the month plus whatever interest accrued that month. So at the end of the month, the balance was 13.78 and 50 cents. And we add on to that the $20 and 30 cents in interest for a total of 13.98 and 80 cents. The last part of the question asks about the minimum payment. So the minimum payment is either $15 or 1 36th of the amount due, whichever is higher. 1 36th of the amount due is 13.98 and 80 cents divided by 36. So that would be $38.86. Since it requires either $15 or this amount, whichever is higher, the minimum payment for this month will be $38.86.